Thank you very much, Neil, and, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a real pleasure to speak to you, a very distinguished audience, but also a very interesting community, one who I think is playing a major role in creating our future. I'm going to talk about my business vision, geography, GIS, changing the world. But I'd like to start with this. You and I are living in an interesting time where the digital transformation is starting to actually emerge for real in front of our face. Virtually everything that moves and changes is becoming measured and connected to the network and made available. As an information platform, this is quite extraordinary. We're wiring up the planet in a digital framework. In this environment, GIS, the measurement technology of location, mapping are becoming essential, are becoming essential. I would assert they're becoming like a language, like a fundamental language for understanding things, understanding the content of our world, but also providing a contextual setting, not only understanding but also applying this knowledge to, to managing our future. And it's just about everything. People, devices, things, cities. The focus of the talk today is obviously the application of this notion to smart cities. And at the very same time, you and I are living in a very strange time. Our world is being challenged as we read in the newspapers, as we see on television. It's increasingly challenged by the issues of population growth and climate change and loss of nature, disasters, social conflicts. You just open up the paper and it's like it's on fire every day. The, the, the evidence would suggest, and many of you have engineering and science backgrounds, that this isn't sustainable. It's not, not a beautiful future. If we're going to turn this around, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take everybody working, working hard, applying our best science, our best engineering, our best design, our best critical thinking, our best technology to address these challenges. And it's going to take everybody. And transportation, the very framework within which you guys live, is going to be essential. It's one of, as you know, the key infrastructure elements that creates the future. GIS, my field, provides a framework as well as technology and process for enabling some of this smart, this smart future to emerge. It allows us to integrate data and visualize and display it in ways that people actually understand things. It's also the framework within which we can do analytics and modeling, many of them in transportation fields. It's also the visual framework that allows people to plan and design and create alternative scenarios and then make decisions about them and then take it to action. This virtuous cycle is very powerful for managing and creating smarter cities, something that we must do. Now, what is a GIS today? In many ways, it's the same concept of 50 years ago. It brings geographic information in to a database and allows us to manage and apply it. And the difference, however, is that the data is now becoming real time. And the applications continue to be mapping and visualization and analysis, but they're now supporting the ingestion of this data into other things like cars, vehicles, doing navigation planning. And we'll hear from a variety of speakers this morning that talk about that. It's a platform for planning and deciding things and increasingly to engage citizens to be able to make them part of a smart city. We might say it's an enabling information platform for creating smarter futures and cities. 
Now, GIS itself is changing. Traditionally, it has been desktops and servers, data management environments, but it's shifting over to the web. It's becoming open and interoperable and connected to just about everything. It now allows us to bring in distributed services and access these services through devices and apps of many kinds, a kind of open, agile, foundational platform. GIS is also getting smarter. It's integrating in all kinds of measurements, integrating also in advanced analytics and visualization, um, in dimensional kinds of data, and faster computers and big data technologies, all the sort of components of the technology evolution that's emerging. This, ladies and gentlemen, I would assert to you is a platform for smarter transportation, the world that, that you live in. What do we mean by smart? What do we mean by smart in a city? The first definition I would suggest is the notion of real time, wiring up everything that moves or changes into geospatial frameworks so that we can manipulate it and see it, both on the urban, urbanized space as well as natural resources, water, air, uh, climate change, etc. And we're already seeing this, the notion of bringing in sensor network information, spatializing it dynamically, using it for situation awareness like this control room at FEMA in my country, the Federal Emergency Management Center. And thousands of examples of like this are emerging all over the world. Or in Seattle, the police department, real-time crime. Uh, this data it comes in with very high velocity, is analyzed locationally and then visualized and integrated into apps that that tell people things, alert them in a web environment. These are some examples of information that is coming in now in your space live. For example, camera traffic monitoring in Santa Clara, California with this organization called MetroTech. Or in London, right before the Olympics, they began experimenting and now have implemented cellular traffic monitoring in their dashboards. And the company called AirSage in the United States has taken all the cellular data for our country and made it available as location services, a new dimension of mapping. And finally, this beautiful little company called City Labs in, in California also is using their transportation modeling origin link destination to take demographics and allocate it actually onto the links. This is opening up and changing what we see and how we understand the smart city world. Today I'm very pleased to announce on behalf of Google and Waze a new partnership between the Waze organization and GIS users. They're sharing through a partnership all the citizen information, the kind of crowdsourcing information that makes Waze so neat with GIS users with real-time dial tone. In return, GIS users are providing things like street closures or other urban operations. This two-way connection means we're wiring up in this example of, of, of crowdsourced information everything that moves and changes. The second definition of smart means connecting everyone and everything. Here, we're talking about a system of engagement, as Gordon Moore talks about it. Not simply a system of record, but a system of engagement where people have identities and things have identities. Wiring them up and using geospatial as a kind of language, not maps only, but geographic information, where things are, connecting people to organizations through identity, which ensures security. Smart apps are already showing up and these are just a few examples that I collected. Some of them are personal, like these go to in LA or traffic or ride amigos, which is car, uh, crowd, uh, uh, carpooling apps. In the design space, we're seeing in San Francisco the use of designing geospatial tools for 
uh, designing high capacity transit, laying out alternative routes and seeing how it impacts population. And in the community engagement space, wow, we're using social media spatialized to be able to check out, for example, a proposed transportation center, a transit station, and getting the feedback from the crowd. And most of you know the sort of real-time parking availability apps that are starting to emerge in cities around the world. I really wish I had had one of these yesterday. I spent about an hour hunting for a parking spot. Um, that's a, it's supposed to be a joke. You're supposed to laugh, but apparently it didn't work. Anyway, apps like this layered on geospatial infrastructure are going to affect and change the future. The third definition of smart means being able to take advantage of advanced analytics and visualization. Uh, traditionally, GIS has used spatial analysis and geoprocessing to help planners do ver various sorts of things. But now it's becoming interactive and also integrating in with big data, being able to deal with understanding in parallelized environments uh, big data analytics with millions, hundreds of millions, billions of observations. These are taxicab data boiled down to being able to find the best place to get a, if you're a taxi driver, the, the best place to get a, the best place to get a tip if you're in New York City. And that's also supposed to be a joke, but it didn't go over well. Uh, <laughs> space time analytics with very large data sets is becoming a new foundation for understanding and planning. And this is just part of the whole game of, of Moore's Law. A fourth definition of smart means integrating our IT systems. Broadly, there are three kinds of IT systems. Systems of record, like cadastral systems or record keeping of assets. Systems of engagement, which are now showing up through social media. I'm Jack, I'm connected et cetera, and systems of insight, the deep analytics. These three kinds of systems are coming together in this new pattern called a WebGIS, where I can leverage all three of them simultaneously. So in cities of the future, and actually starting now, cities are beginning to say, well, let's have an integrated location platform that brings these things into one frame. Fifth, if you're counting, smart cities integrate all of this information and provide a platform for planning and visualizing alternative futures. Urban designers are now designing an alternative and quickly evaluating the consequences. Same in green infrastructure planning or transportation planning. What if I do this? This is not unfamiliar, unfamiliar to the plan, planning, transportation planning world but it's starting to all come together, integrating not just engineering data or population data, but all of the different layers that constitute what we need to think about if we're gonna have a smart and sustainable future. Creating the future starts with planning. And in transportation, this is already showing up. These are just a few examples in Abu Dhabi and Los Angeles and in uh, Milwaukee and Paris. Designing and quickly seeing through visualization what the future would be. But in Singapore, they are designing alternative urban patterns and quickly evaluating, like this map shows in 3D red, the impaction of that on increased traffic in the city. This is smart planning. It's the whole cycle. It excites me so much that we can actually not just throw together the future, but thoughtfully bring scientific information and evaluate it through a public language of maps and visualization. The last thing I'll talk about is smart GIS engages communities. This means while cities and regions are doing a great job with GIS in running their city and it'll get better and better, some cities are beginning to take the whole city's digital stuff and put it out on the web in a cloud. 
I call it community GIS. It's not just for individuals or enterprises. It's a GIS for the community, like all of the Melbourne region, where citizens and NGOs and, and kids in school can get connected to the maps and data of the city and start feeding back. In Los Angeles, startups are even being invoked. The mayor actually said, you know, Jack, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in the past on building a GIS. I really want to make that available to stimulate innovation in the startup community. So in LA, they built this notion, and now six other cities have copied it and are starting to, to, to build the same thing. The idea of not just open data, but the next step beyond open data, integrating all of the community within the strategy. It's all living and working and collaborating together through this, through this vision of maps and geographic information. What does this mean long term? I've watched GIS be very powerful for individuals, and you've, most of you have seen it in planning and various forms, making maps, doing analysis. Ah, I'm smarter because I have the power of information. I've also seen it emerge in organizations with enterprise approaches in departments of transportation, here in Vic Roads, here in, in uh, Vic, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're taking another step, uh, the idea of networks of organizations using shared services uh, to be able to frame new forms of collaboration. My eyes first got opened in Los Angeles when I saw in the public works department a young man was editing a street map on a workstation. I said, well, that's interesting. What's the, what's the parcel map behind it? It was a leading question because the city of Los Angeles says, I think it has three different copies of parcel maps, you know, cadastral maps. And I said, is that, is that the planning department's parcel map or the works department? He says, no, 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 Jack. This is, this is the county's parcel map coming in as a web service behind my transportation editing. You get this idea? So one agency is serving another agency through web maps and web services. This is, gonna, this, is gonna, this is gonna unravel very nicely. On the internet, with web services of maps of all types, we'll be able to interrelate our knowledge, share our knowledge, build a kind of infrastructure or platform, or I like to call it a nervous system for the future, a nervous system for our cities, a nervous system for our planet, where everything is measured, integratable, analyzable, and used in these kinds of applications that I just shared. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge opportunity. Humans have never been more capable of sharing their knowledge. We're wiring the world up and then understanding what it means and then acting. So in this meeting, in your organizations, I really want to challenge you to to transform your organizations to open information sharing and embrace these big challenges that our, our planet has, that our cities have, that organizations have, that citizens have. Envision through the very instruments that you work with, planning, designing, evaluating, and then share this information. This organization, ITS's, an amazing organization in the sense that it's created a community of sharing knowledge. Today, tomorrow, people are open and sharing. This is what I'm doing in Singapore. This is what I'm doing in LA. This idea of learning from each other and collaborating and designing and creating a smarter future. I believe this is actually one of the key elements for creating a sustainable future. And uh, I appreciate the chance to share a few thoughts about that with you. Thank you.